Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here, and today I thought to do another discussion video, um, really regarding something that is present in all of Star Trek and really isn't, I think, in depth discussed that much, uh, and that is phasers, lasers, and disruptors, particle weapons in Star Trek. What are they? What do they do? Why is there the distinction? Uh, you know. How do they perform differently, and what do they actually mean? Because I think the writers kind of use them interchangeably. Um, so let's get into it. So, really, you can kind of trace the difference between a disruptor and a phaser back to, I'd say, 22nd century, uh, where you have lasers and plasma cannons. And this is something that is in, in Enterprise and also sort of in the expanded, you know, beta cannon as well. So, lasers, we all know what a laser beam is. It's a Laminated beam, it's a beam of concentrated uh, light energy um, and it can cut through stuff, but it can be reflected by shielding and other kind of countermeasures. So it, it's quite limited in its application on kind of military ships, but uh, you know, in terms of for slicing up asteroids, it's great. Uh, then you have plasma cannons. Now, this is really where the disruptor I think comes from because essentially what it is is a pulse of superheated plasma that's formed within a magnetic bubble in sort of a magnetic uh, containment field which is why it's in a series of individual pulses it has a higher rate of fire than a laser uh, and is probably slightly more energy efficient but i think it changes but essentially here you have your two main methods of propellant and this is really what it is it's actually more to do with the idea of propellant than uh, anything else so I, in terms of modern firearms so you have your phaser propellant we'll call it uh, which is based off the laser concept in which you basically have a collaminated beam um, that me travels to the target uh, and then actually what happens is an energy pulses uh, transferred through the beam we see that in the like the first episode of enterprise actually when they're in that time distortion room and you can see the sort of the actual energy pulse coming through the phaser. This brings me on to another thing, which I'll quickly mention for phasers, which is, you know, everyone knows that all phasers have two, have three settings, stun, kill, and everything else. Um, but in terms of, well, what's the difference between stun and kill? Surely if it's something that could kill someone, it won't just stun them, it'll harm them in some way. You know, it's like kill. It's obviously like elect concentrated electroplasma, and yeah, that'll scorch someone and disintegrate someone potentially. But then, okay, what is stun? Just adding less won't make it non-lethal. Um, so, in my view, what stun probably does is you have we're contained within the beam. So it's actually sort of like you see in the JJ uh, verse. They have the phases with the rotating bolt. Um, and I actually think it's, yeah, you actually have two, maybe not assemblies, but two kinds of ammunition. You have your uh, electroplasma, which is uh, lethal, and then you just have an electrical charge, uh, which is at such a frequency that it should disrupt the motor functions of the target. Uh, so basically, it's a fancy taser. Uh, with regard to whether or not you could knock someone out with it safely, you can't knock someone out safely in real life, so likelihood is probably not it would probably knock them off their feet and they'd probably um have a bit of trouble coordinating for a while but they wouldn't be unconscious so you'd still need to like jump on them and cart them off to the brig uh but you know it's 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 believable um i don't know so much with disruptors presumably so because like i say it is actually more a method of propellant than anything else you have your phaser and then you can channel whatever energy you like through that propellant beam. Uh, so with most phasers, it's, I think it's also to do with um, firing mechanism. So I think another thing to take into account, so people complain in Enterprise they have phase cannons too early and they shouldn't have them until uh, the original series. I have a somewhat different view on that and I think it's more to do, you have this parallel technology. I think lasers are still being issued in the 22nd century and into the 23rd because they're probably more reliable and efficient technology in the way bow and arrow isn't a reliable and efficient technology compared to medieval handgunners. Um, but one is going to eventually 
kind of surpass the other, but it, it takes time. Uh, and I think the early phase cannons, as seen on Enterprise, are unreliable. I think it's like comparing black powder to smokeless powder. Black powder does a lot to uh, foul up the action and the barrel and everything, so it diminishes accuracy. Uh, it also doesn't produce as high a muzzle velocity, so there wasn't really the ability to create the modern firearm, uh, whereas then smokeless powder came in and suddenly it was. So I think that's why you see a big change also in phases in the 23rd century. I want to say that's probably when they introduced the uh, rapid Nadian generating crystals, which is a word salad that they use. Um, because, yeah, it's it's a then more refined form of energy. I mean, that's the other thing with phases, they're precision weapons. The energy that they deliver is directed specifically to the target area and nowhere else. It doesn't sort of arc out once it impacts it just stays confined to that area uh, so it's very good for kind of limiting damage unless you don't want to do that but in terms of precision phases definitely have the edge um, but so what you have in the 23rd century like I say is I think a change from the old phase cannon to uh, these new phasers and they actually are worth using instead of uh, lasers which perhaps until then were a more safe and reliable technology, but now Phaser is developed enough so that you can actually just use it um, as it is. Um, so then we come to really disruptors, and like I say, I think it's it's very much like um, the way and the way blasters work in Star Wars, as they're essentially you have compressed gas that's formed around a mag formed in a magnetic field and sort of pressure shot out the barrel um that's a very basic plasma cannon what i think happens with disruptors primarily again similar th kind of thing you have your early disruptors or plasma cannons or whatever kind of cannon you want to really uh put in it what kind of e energy you want to use whether you want to use plasma polaron whatever um but then I think what happens is, again, you then start using uh, antiprotons. We know this is something. Antiprotons are highly destructive. What they'll do is that it'll knock into... Uh, let me think about that. It'll knock into an atom. It will then impart uh, an instability charge. And then what that will do is cause basically a chain nuclear reaction to all the local atoms, which is why when a disruptor hits a ship, it explodes. Uh, it's explosive. That's why you can, with a very large disruptor shot, destroy an entire ship because it, it has that explosive power that a phaser doesn't. Uh, the other advantages can kind of be seen. The phaser has a lower rate of fire, but it's more accurate. Disruptors have a faster rate of fire and potentially higher damage per second, but you have to close range. It's not very accurate. Um, those are really the kind of the main basics. Um, but again, what we also see by the time of um, next gener well, next generation Deep Space Nine is there's kind of a merging of uh, technologies or a convergent evolution in that we see disruptor beams and pulse phasers. So then it becomes, okay, what are they doing differently? So with the pulse phaser, I think they're still using the rapid Nadian crystals. Um but they're actually using the technique of disruptors to propel it. But the ammunition is still kind of the same ammunition as you would find in a phaser. Um, are they then changing the propellant for disruptors then when they switch to beam disruptors? Because you can't. Because one thing that's very observable is that ships that are armed with pulse phasers only have well don't only have pulse phasers, but those cannot be used as well as uh, culminated phasers. And you can with the disruptors, so why is that? And that's probably to do with how the, I don't know, how the assembly works, perhaps? Uh, that it can kind of, you can't break a culminated beam up into pulses, but you can perhaps break a disruptor into like a series of very small but rapid pulses. Because that's, again, something we see in like Wrath of Khan, is the phaser used by the Reliant is a series of uh, pulses within the beam. And so I think what you could probably say 
with a disruptor that is a, a beam disruptor is that it's a series of very small but rapid pulses within a beam um, and then it's more easy to kind of attune and perhaps easier to get a higher velocity on the shot um, I mean the obvious explanation is the effects guys don't do their work um, well they do do work but they get it wrong the effects guys get it wrong is really the explanation but in terms of that you do have the, one kind of propellant can be kind of adjusted to appear appear like the other i think it still probably probably still changes because ultimately delivered in a phaser i think the individual sh an individual shot from a phaser is much higher damage than an individual shot from a disruptor uh, the difference is speed. I think a phaser, you'd be looking at one big chunk hit of damage. And when a, if you were hit by a disruptor beam, you'd actually kind of see a, tr a sort of a, a smooth trickle of damage. Um, so then that gets us really on to... Um, so that's... You, phasers and disruptors themselves are means of propellant. That's actually all they are. It's how do you sustain a... a energy projectile across the void of space without it like dissipating and losing energy and the like uh, and you know making it go in the direction you want we see in like other weapons like for example the Romulan bird of prey plasma can in my view that's kind of like a large shotgun almost in terms of it's a very it's a close range weapon and it's very powerful but it dissipates because it is literally just a raw bulk cloud of plasma and so it dissipates very quickly it's not actually got any solid projectile so calling it a plasma torpedo who knows um but it is just this raw ball of plasma rather than a plas an actual plasma torpedo which would be a contained plasma charge within a torpedo casing or a plasma phaser or disruptor again the plasma will be contained within it now there won't be as much plasma so it won't be as much damage uh and neither so that's the thing with having these either phaser or disruptor is how do you get the most bang out of your buck because the actual propellant method isn't imparting damage what's imparting damage is the uh energy contained within is the is the ammunition effectively and in a lot of the sort of games, both, you know, mainline big games or even some of the uh, flash tracks, you know, that you can, st I don't know if you can still find them online, um, but they all, you know, go into sort of distinguish the different kinds of particle cannons available to the player. Um, so there's a lot of kind of difference, even if there really only are actually two primary propellant methods, and actually they seem to be very much merging and it well not merging but it's it's convergent technology it's moving towards a similar thing uh, which i think is interesting because again that does happen in real life you can get technology that's all actually moving towards the same look and the same thing uh, so those are just my thoughts uh what are your guys let me know in the comments below i'll see you guys in the next video